When I came out west earlier this year, there were a handful of topics I wanted to check out in more depth. Big-time agriculture was among them. I mean, if you want to see and learn about mass production of fruits and vegetables, there really is no place like California. For most crops, other than corn and soybeans, this is really the belly of the beast, a place where monoculture often reigns and the use of chemicals is often rampant. I met epidemiologist Brenda Eskenazi of the University of California Berkeley School of Public Health. She's an expert on the hazards of chemical exposures. And for nearly 16 years, she's been measuring the effects of pesticides and other environmental chemicals on pregnant women and their children in the Salinas Valley. It's called the Chamaco study. Chamacos is Mexican slang for kids, but in this case, it also stands for the Center for Health Assessment of Mothers and Children of Salinas. So in 1998, we got funded by the US EPA and the NIH to look at the effects of environmental chemicals on children's health. California is the you know, leading agricultural state in the nation. So we knew it had to be something about pesticides and agricultural chemicals. Well, and what have you found out? We enrolled 600 women delivering at the county hospital, receiving prenatal care at a series of different community clinics serving mostly farm workers. Initially, we were interested in organophosphate pesticides because they were the most commonly used pesticides. We've looked at the relationship of those organophosphate and showed associations with um, neurodevelopment, lowered IQ, which of course is everyone's concerned about the yeah, child's IQ. You don't want that. You don't want that. And it was across the board. In terms of environmental chemicals, the most striking findings are probably the relationship of flame retardants with neurodevelopment, fertility. So you're not only looking at farm chemicals? Not only looking at farm chemicals. We've collected about 150,000 biological samples and measured many different things in those, those samples. It's so expensive to get studies going like this, and it's highly unusual to follow a cohort for this many years. So across the world, we are being looked at as a model for how to do this kind of study. Is there a time in these kids' lives where exposures seem more denigrative than in other times? So for the organophosphates, it was almost only prenatal if you're looking at neurodevelopment. If you're looking at respiratory symptoms, it was prenatal and postnatal. My concern is mostly the prenatal period. The problem is that half of pregnancies are not planned, and the period of sensitivity is probably throughout the pregnancy. There is obviously some benefit, arguably, in using pesticides on mm -hmm. crops, but we're talking about direct damage here. So how serious a problem is this exposure among farm workers? I have concerns about exposures to pregnant women. I do feel that we should somehow control the amount of exposure that they have. The question that usually people ask is, do I eat organic? <laughs> I was going to get to that, but go ahead. <laughs> and the answer to that question is not exclusively, but as much as possible. But I also recognize that organic is more expensive. and. To me, it's so much more important that pregnant women and children eat fruits and vegetables. So do you say, eat fruits and vegetables, wash them carefully before you eat them? It's exactly what I say. Now that many of the kids in the study are in their teens, they're getting involved in projects to lessen chemical exposures in their communities. And while there's still plenty of data to be collected and shared with other researchers, for Brenda and her colleagues, this study has become so much more than statistics. It's about nurturing the human lives that they've touched. You're one of my children, you see. You just, you know, you got many mothers. 